Okay, today, just a little shot before we uh, do our drone lab, uh, a little shot on, do you remember how to absolute value a function? So I'm gonna do two quick ones, just you either remember this or you don't. And let's do, uh, I'll make it go like this. There is a function. I wanna know if that's f of x, what does it mean to do the absolute value of it? But there's two choices. Let's do, to start with, the absolute value around the outside of the function, which I hope you think of as, hmm, the outside is the y stuff, and also, I'm absolute valuing f of x, which is y. You're absolute valuing the y. All right, I'll pause for a second while you write what you think the graphical answer is to this. I'll pause while you do that. Okay, so I'm hoping that you knew that the y's got absolute value, so only the negative y's would change. The y's that were positive, which were all of these, all of those were positive y's, and so were these. Those would all stay the same. Okay, and then these guys where the y's were negative, we have to go the other way for them. So the green one would be the answer. Raise your hand if you had that one right. Okay, did you have that one right? Rubbing your eye. Okay, good. Now let's take the opposite kind. That's where you, we'll use the same parent function and then do absolute value on the inside. See what you think that answer would be. It is not the same. Very different. Now, this time I'm absolute valuing the x's and therefore the x's that are negative get affected, but it's not exactly the same. It's not like just a reflection thing. I'll pause while you try that one. Did you know that when you absolute value the inside, the x's that are positive stay the same? Here's where all the x's were positive. They stay the same. And the ones that are negative aren't there anymore, and it's not a reflection over this way. If you thought that, spank your uh, self. No, that sounds terrible. <laughs> Just don't do that. You can't do that. You need to instead do this. A reflection across that line, and that's a pretty bad reflection. I'll try again. There. You sound like a seagull. Raise your hand if you had that one right. Okay, good. So, then last thing is, how about the, what's it called again? The what of this? I don't want to say it wrong. The reciprocal of this. Okay. The reciprocal of this is 1 over f of x, and I'm we pointed out, I'm going to do this one because this is a really hard one, and I, I don't know if you're ready for this yet. Okay. Do you remember me saying that where it hit zero was a big deal? Because then the f of x is zero, and what happens at one over zero? The asymptote. So at zero, the new function would have an asymptote. So there's an the asymptote here. There's an asymptote here. And then do you remember that the other spots that were really pertinent were where f of x was 1, because 1 over 1 is the won't change it. Its y value, if it's 1, won't change. So that means if I pick this spot to be my 1 level, let's say it hits 1 right there, and it hits 1 right there, and it hits negative 1, let's say right here, okay, then those spots are all important because they're on the reciprocal graph. Those are the only spots where the original and the reciprocal would touch. Because when you do 1 over 1, it doesn't change. Or 1 over negative 1, it doesn't change. All right. So now, I would say when this gets big, then my reciprocal gets smaller and smaller. As that gets bigger and bigger, the other one gets smaller and smaller. And as this original gets really small here, the reciprocal would get really big. You see what's happened there? It's kind of like the first shall become last, and the last shall become first. Well, the big part makes a small part, and the really small part here makes it really big. All right, so in this zone, we know it goes through this, but this gets relatively big right here, so the other one needs to get relatively small in this zone. As this gets really small, 
the other one needs to get really big. So bottom line, it looks like this. And as this gets really small, the other part will get really big. And that was hard to draw, but it's kind of like an upside down parabola. All right, last part. This part here is on my graph. I know it is because it's at one. That's a happy place. Is at one, I know it's got to be there. And then as this gets small, my reciprocal gets big. There we go. Now that was a tough one. You wouldn't have to do anything that tough. Yes. Yes, the asymptote is pretty simple. It's where the function is 0, because then when I have 1 over 0, that's what creates an asymptote, when there's a 0 on the bottom. Okay, so it's simple. When the function hits 0, there's an asymptote. When your function hits 1, that's a special spot that the new equation, the new reciprocal function, will go through, is at 1s and negative 1s. All right. So let's try the hardest kind, the one over. Let's see if you can do this. I got to have areas where it's small and areas where it's big, right? So let's say my original looks like that. And, oh, it never hit zero. Interesting. So it won't have any asymptote. But let's say that it's this spot right here where it hits one. So that red function has a reciprocal and it is like this. Where this gets small, the other one gets big. Where the original gets big, the other one gets small. Does it ever touch zero? No, can't. Can't. I think one over something could equal zero unless one over the something, if the something itself became zero, then it just wouldn't exist. So one over something can't be zero. All right, well, as this one gets small, you get how this one's getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, then this one's going to keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. That's the way I think you should judge is look at the function. Is the function getting smaller and smaller? Then its inverse will be getting bigger and bigger. Yeah, sorry, inverse, sorry, reciprocal. Oh, I hate that. Wish I had never learned the word. No, that's not, not really true, but. I often confuse reciprocal and inverse. These are reciprocals. All right, and as this one, the original gets really big, you just have to make yours get smaller and smaller. And if it continued forever, this sort of implies there's an asymptote in the original because the red one is going straight up. It's kind of like there's an asymptote here. But uh, I never actually put one, so hard to know exactly what to do with this if this if I had just made this red one continue and get just bigger and bigger and with no asymptote you know then this one would just keep going and get smaller and smaller with no asymptote okay last one I'll keep it simple do the reciprocal of let me think that. And yes, it's touching there and there. And that's f of x, and that is a function because it passes the vertical line test. It's a half a circle, which we actually know the equation for, but you might not have it memorized, but we could do it. I'll pause for a second. Let me give that one a try. Okay. You had to pick a spot where you decided it was 1. I don't know where you picked. Let's say I picked that and that as my spots where it's 1 doesn't matter that much, but you needed to pick a spot because you figured it was one. Okay? And then, as your original gets higher and higher, this one needs to get lower and lower. Would it ever hit zero? Nope. And then, where this one gets really small, 
the inverse needs to get really big. And last thing, I really should have started with this, the spots where the function is what are important? Zero. When the function's zero, right here and here, I needed asymptotes. So the blue one with the green asymptotes is your answer. Raise your hand if you had that one right. Almost everybody. Good job. Okay. If you're still struggling with that, you do have mast tomorrow morning if you want to come in for mast. Uh, I'd be happy to do some extra practice on reciprocals with you. All right, and tomorrow is the official review day. Uh, today, we're going to go outside and do some stuff with the drone. And so I'm going to record this next part. You'll need your iPad still. Uh, it's not like, oh, my brain gets to shut off and I go watch a plane fly. Um, if you go to Schoology and you find the file that says drone on it uh, and open it up, that would be good. So that looks kind of like this, and here's drone day one. I open it up, and Mr. Server Drone's on. I thought that was a good name. And goals. We're going to just help you think about something simple, and it's how fast is this thing going? Well, you guys all have ridden in cars enough to be able to relate to, like, miles per hour. That's kind of what you're used to. Like, oh, I'm driving at 30 miles an hour in this neighborhood, and you know what that feels like, okay? And you know what it looks like when cars are going past your house at 30 miles an hour or whatever. So I want you to be able to change things into miles per hour really easily. So uh, I want you to be able to pace in outside between our two lines. Their two lines are 30 meters, or sorry, 30 feet apart, okay? And uh, I, I went with what we had up on the field when I actually got there. Uh, it was in uh, feet, and so therefore 10 yards is the same as 30 feet, right? Do you get that? All right, so then the two blue lines that you're going to see up on the soccer field up there uh, happen to be off by two inches, but close enough to 30 feet. Then if I fly the drone across those two lines, Here's a blue line, here's a blue line, and the drone goes like this. This is a rough sketch of what's going to happen, and maybe I could even make my little drone with my little, uh, what do you call those, the little, this is like a sky view of my drone flying over that. Then it's going to go these 30 feet in some amount of time. Let's say it does it in uh, two seconds. Then I could start by saying I have 30 feet in two seconds. Did you guys learn in science class how to do what I call dimensional analysis and some people call stoichiometry where you take 30 feet in two seconds and you change it into miles per hour? I ring a bell? How many of you feel like you have done that before? All right, how many of you feel like you have not done that before? All right, and there's several. If you haven't done that before, let me show you. It's pretty easy. I just have to multiply by a fact. Now, I could multiply by a fact that says one foot is 12 inches, but the problem is I'm moving it in the wrong direction. Now I've just changed this to inches per second. That's not good. That doesn't help me. It's a fact that's true. 12 inches is one foot, and so I'm effectively multiplying by one, so that's all good, but it's not moving me in the right direction. Who can tell me one that would move me in the right direction towards miles per hour? What's a fact that you know that I could put here that would make something cancel? Yes, sir? You got it. And why am I putting it down here? There's a right and a wrong way to do this. Why am I putting it there? Because it cancels out the feet. See, the feet will cancel when it's like this. All right, so 5,280 feet. And then I got to make this a fact that's true. So what do I put here? One, not yard. Mile. There you go. All right. One mile, 5,280 feet. Nice job knowing that. And you guys all, I, I'm going to tell you this once, you will need to know that on a test someday, and we're not going to give you that fact. So memorize it. You should know how many feet are in a mile. Something you should just know. And if you haven't got to memorize, memorize it. And it will come back to bite you someday if you don't know it. All right. So just get it memorized now. 5,280 feet per mile. So now I've got my answer in what? miles per second. Is that what you're used to? No, you're used to miles per hour. So we need to somehow change this. I got the miles part right. I got the second part. That's what I want to fix. So I'm going to get that seconds out of there. And instead, I'm going to put something up here that'll cancel it. So I got to put seconds up here. Know the fact 
that I should use. A fact about seconds. Yes. 60 seconds in one minute is a great fact. I think everybody in the room knew that, too. So now I'm in miles per minute. I'm getting closer. See what I mean? And now there's only one more left. What's the last one? Come on. 61 hour. Why was that good? Because minutes canceled. Now my units are in miles per hour. There we go. That's changed from the drone went 30 feet in two seconds to whatever this multiplies all out to divided by whatever this multiplies out to and the units are in miles per hour. All right. So do you get if you can measure something and how many feet it goes in how many seconds, then you got your conversion and you just figure out, oh, I just multiplied by a bunch of stuff. So this is like a little mini lab. This white sheet of paper that you have in front of you looks like this. This little mini lab here uh, is going to be, first, I want you to know what one pace feels like that will be three feet. In other words, some of you guys are short. You're going to have to take longish steps, but you're going to want to cover that that distance in 10 steps, okay? And if you're like, oh, it took me nine steps, then your steps were a little too big. You know what I mean? Make it so that you can pace, and you know how that pace should go, so that you can go, for me, I know it's about like this, okay? And that's about one yard for every step. Why is that handy? Because you can pace off your backyard really quickly and easily, like for something like that. Or how big's your house? If you have no idea how big your house is, well, go stand outside your house and pace and go, Okay, it was 30 paces long, and I know that one pace is a yard, and so it's 30 yards long, which is, uh, I guess, about 90 feet long. That's how big my house is. You know what I mean? It's a great way to estimate. If you can pace and know that each pace is about a yard, that's going to be cool. So that's one thing I want you to do. Another thing I want you to do uh, is uh, change the RPMs. I already showed you uh, how to do that dimensional analysis, but 5,000 RPMs is how fast this thing goes at hover. And I already measured it for you. Does anybody have a short-term memory? What was the radius of this puppy? The radius of the blade was 4.75. All right. And that was 4.75 inches. So if you know that the little speck on the end of the blade is going to go wound one rotation, then you know how many inches that is now. You can use math to figure that out. Hopefully you have that formula in your head about circumferences of circles. If not, go Google it or something. All right. Then you'll be able to tell me how fast that tip of the blade is actually traveling, and it will be really fast. It's going to freak you out a little bit, like, wait a minute, am I doing something wrong? The tip of that blade is going very fast. If that tip of the blade just by itself was shooting across the field in a straight line, as instead of going around in a circle like this, it's going really fast. And that's at only 5,000. The, what I'd say was the true high top speed of the drone. You remember how many? It was 12,000 RPM was its top top. But we're going to go with the 5,000 for this because that's about what it is at hover. All right. And then lastly, uh, we're going to time the drone going laterally this way for 30 feet. And then we're going to have it time it laterally, no, no, vertically this way and see how fast the thing can go when I crank it and it goes up. Which do you think will be faster? Do you think it'll go faster horizontally or vertically? What's your best guess? Well, some people are saying vertical, some people are saying horizontal. I guess you'll find out. To me, I would think fighting gravity would suck. So I'm thinking that going straight up is not going to be its fastest because it has to fight gravity. You know what I mean? Whereas the other way, it's just neutral with gravity. It's not trying to go higher, you know. So you'll find out, though. All right. So that's all the data uh, or the, all the stuff that we have to do. Now we got to actually go outside and gather some data and finish this up. This is due on Monday, and that's all I got for you for today.